Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. Today we're going over laser engraving and finishing charcuterie boards. So I've been drying my own live edge up in my attic for about two years now. So you'll see that I have slats in between and that'll allow for airflow so you won't get any mold in your wood. Also before I stored the wood I used a latex exterior coat on the edges and this just makes sure they're driving it drying out more evenly and you won't have as much splitting. And the bark was really easy to get off just by tapping it with a rubber mallet to loosen it and then just peel it off with my fingers. So after I cut my charcuterie board to shape, which you'll see in a second, I actually sanded from 120 grit all the way up to a 600 grit. So I used my cutoff saw, my jigsaw to cut around the handle, my orbital sander to get it nice and smooth and rounded, and I also finished all the edges before I laser engraved it with my mineral oil and beeswax um, combo. And I will show you that in just a little bit. Now, I'm not going to go too in depth today on how I designed this file. I decided I'm going to put that in my very next video to give you guys some tips and tricks of when you're designing. So here I am. My design is finished. I've made my white bounding box and I am removing my pen. And I'm just slowing this down here. The reason why I do a white bounding box around any of my designs is when I import them into Laser Gerbil, Laser Gerbil will actually trace any curves a lot nicer that are on the edges. And uh, I get rid of the black outline on the bounding box because I do not want Laser Gerbil to be picking that up and trace that and engrave a bounding box. Okay, so I'm gonna, just gonna name my file here and I'm going to be exporting it as a PNG. And again, in my next video, I'm going to tell you why I use PNGs. So I'm just going to have my selected objects. My background, I'm going to make a solid color at the 300 DPI, we'll keep it to scale, and I clicked OK. So my machine is turned off, and right now I'm going to focus my laser. So with my OLM3, it's got the little click kickstand, and I will focus it into a number of spots, not just one, because I want to make sure my board is completely level. Now, my charcuterie board wasn't exactly square, so that's why I decided on what edge to make my bottom was pretty much the straightest. And then I used a T-square from the left-hand side and I had made my line across. And there I was just measuring how far I wanted to come in. So I've got laser gerbil and I'm going to go file open. And from the very top, I'm going to keep it at sharp and I'm going to turn it on black and white. So I do not have to play with any of the contrast or brightness. Then I'm gonna go line to line tracing and horizontal, and I'm going to do eight lines. Now this is a hardwood maple, so that's why I'm gonna up my lines a little bit because I want a very dark and deep engraving on the charcuterie board. And so here I just did a quick crop, and then I'm gonna click next, and it'll take me into my settings. So my engraving speed, 1900, I'm going to do dynamic power, Remember, constant powers for cutting only. And 50, which is 5% is my minimum. 95% is my maximum. I'm gonna auto size that so it is the exact same size that I designed it to be able to fit on the board. And then I will click OK. So now I will turn on my machine. And of course I do have the uh, Norton comes up and asks me if I want to scan the drive of my machine. And of course I click no. There we go, finally it gets home. So now I'm going to go up to the top left hand corner, pick my COM, which is COM5, and I'm going to connect my laser. Then I'm going to go to the bottom left of the screen and I am going to then toggle my laser to where I want it to start. 
Now by sliding that slider down, I am just making it go just micro steps. So it will get exactly where I want it to go. Okay, so I finally jogged my laser to where I need it to be. And I make sure I turn that focus light off. Fourth button in is setting my origin. So I'm setting my zero point because that's where I want my laser to start from. So now along the bottom there, I will click frame. And this first initial frame that I'm going to be doing is just actually lining up my cutting board so I know that it's good and straight. Now I don't have my raised table underneath right now. I just have my cutting board put up on some blocks. And uh, that's why I do not have a grid pattern, but this is a very easy way for me to make sure my cutting board is straight before I'm engraving because I have put that little light line that right now the laser is going to start tracing on it right now. So I will just tweak it just a little bit to make sure that that laser is going along the line that I want it to. And here I am sticking my nose in the camera. And I'm just going to double check here. Just another frame just to make sure that I have my charcuterie board nice and straight because I put a lot of work into sanding this sucker down and I do not want to make a mistake. So my next step is rejogging the laser, resetting the origin, framing, so I know that my artwork here is exactly centered and where I want it to be on the board. So at the top left of my screen there, you're going to see the green play button. I am ready to run the program. Now on the bottom right of the laser gerbil screen where you see the S 1.00 G1, 1.00. If you go down there and click with your mouse, you're able to open up your slider tools. So at this point, if I'm finding that maybe it's too light, I need to up the power or lower the speed. And maybe I'm not getting enough detail. I can also lower the rapid as well. So you can do the slider functions while it's engraving live to be able to change that. And I wanted to show you before, my estimated time was 26 minutes, but when it started engraving, it changed it to 40 minutes. Laser Gerbil is usually pretty good on its estimated time, but sometimes it does change. So there, I've just uh, opened up my DIY enclosure there, and we are almost done the board. And here it is all completed. So I'm going to turn off my machine because I am not moving my grand tree because you can ruin your drive motors. You can cause static electricity, which will short out your machine. So just make sure your machine is off before you move that. So here it is. And so you can see, yes, I do have some scorching on there because I wanted a very deep engraving. And again, make sure you're putting your logo on everything you do. So now I'm going to run this board up to the attic and with my orbital sander, I'm going to use the 600 grit again to get rid of the scorching, then an 800 grit all the way up to 1000 grit. And this is just going to give the board a super smooth finish. But we're not done yet. It's time to treat our boards. And what I like to use is the Clark's. You can purchase this whole complete set here as a soap, oil, wax, your wax applicator, your soap scrub brush, and your buffing pad. Wood over time will begin to dull. It'll warp and show its wear. Um, this is when you need a good conditioning oil. So your cutting boards will also soak up everything, good or bad. So that's why you need an antimicrobial properties to penetrate deep into the wood to block bad bacteria from entering the wood fibers. So this is food grade safe mineral oil with orange and lemon extract and it smells absolutely wonderful. So I have washed my hands and I'm just going to use my hands to actually smooth out the oil because I want it to make sure I get it on evenly 
and I'm getting up of course into the grooves of my laser engraving and I want that oil to soak in evenly so I'll keep on adding it and you'll actually be able to see in some spots in the video here it's soaking in so quickly into some of the areas so that's why I will go back and I will make sure to add more oil in certain spots never use a plant-based oil to condition your boards as it can go rancid now in a second I'm going to show you a mix that I make that I like to refinish some of my signs with and some of the indoor decor that I do because with the orange and lemon extracts it makes some of my projects just smell so wonderful and you'll get rid of that well that burnt wood smell from laser engraving so I'll continue over the next half hour or so if I see some certain spots where it's really soaking in I'll just add a few spots and then when I'm happy with it I'll leave it for about two hours to soak in now I've done the front and back and I've let it sit overnight so very little oil is coming off of it so now I'm going to show you the mixture that I like to use and I will take two parts oil to one part wax and I've got my little jar there and I keep out the rag that I use right in it now I heat it up for about 30 seconds in the microwave just so it doesn't have any large chunks I'll squeeze out the excess out of the rag and I'll apply it to my board and of course this is allowing more oil to soak into the board and then we're getting our first thin coating of wax on the board and as you can see it's starting to bring it to life there we're starting to get that gloss that is just going to make the board so beautiful so I'm going to treat both sides and I'm going to leave that for a couple hours and now we can begin to add our wax so I ordered the kit quite a while ago so my applicator is older they've actually updated their applicators to a round sponge that will fit into the wax container um, so for now I have to use one of the buffing pads to actually take out some wax and apply it to the board first and uh, I'm doing the back first because I want to be very careful like right here you saw a chunk fly off my buffing pad there but the applicator is actually really good for picking up those chunks and here I'm just rubbing a coating of the wax onto the board now the wax is a beeswax carnauba wax um, lemon and orange extracts again so yeah it just smells really wonderful and if you've got rough hands from sanding and and doing all your woodworking well it really conditions your skin on your hands really good as well so i'm just going to work that in and i'm just going to add enough that it's a nice smooth layer and i'm going to let that dry for a couple hours then i'll flip the board over and i'll do the front side and let that dry for a couple hours now because this is the board's very first treatment I will do this over three days I know it seems like a lot but it's really you just wax it set it aside now I had bought this handy dandy little tool and I still had a spare clean buffer so I decided I would make a hole in my little buffer and use this tool to actually make a buffer I can use in my drill <laughs> so here I go now this was just the first day of waxing I wanted to see how buffing it might make it look so I was very careful just to use the sides because yeah after all this work I didn't want to scratch it with the screw so that's the raw wood to the back side after three days of waxing and the front side of three days of waxing so as you can see I think I accomplished a pretty good gloss finish on there 
with my DIY drill buffing pad. But it's 3.30 a.m. in the morning here. It's time for me to go to bed. So I hope this video helps and inspires. And don't forget to subscribe. We appreciate each and every one of you.